We're going to talk uh, whether to cut or keep a list of players here. These are all you know, players who we had expectations for going into the season, not necessarily first, second round, third round picks, but players who were drafted in most leagues who have disappointed to this point. So Scott and I have each come up with a couple of names to throw at each other, and I will kick it off here. Scott, tell me, should you keep or cut Ty France? Wow, that's a great name that you called out because I actually was in a league this weekend where I needed to make a cut to pick somebody up and I'm like, who am I going to cut? And not him, not him, not him. Like not Ty France. Like, wait a minute. Ty, Ty France isn't doing anything right now. His, his last 30 games, his stats are awful. I ultimately mm -hmm. decided to keep him. I thought there's just too much back class with him. What he did the last two years, hitting for a plus average, hitting for enough power to make an impact in that category. His overall stats aren't that bad. Again, they, they trend pretty bad for the last month. And I know the batted ball profile isn't great, but I was in a league where I really came close to hitting that drop button. I had the transaction queued up, add player, drop France, and I backed off it. He's a hold for me. So he's 83% rostered in Yahoo leagues right now. So again, player drafted everywhere. Uh, I believe he had 20 homers last year, 18 homers the year before. He makes a lot of contact. And that's the thing where you're like, things have got to begun to even out for him eventually. 13.6% strikeout rate so far this season, the lowest of his career. Not a lot of hard contact, like you were saying, the batter ball profile, not super exciting. But I feel like everyone on this Mariners offense is underachieved. We could talk about Julio Rodriguez, too. Obviously, you're not dropping Julio Rodriguez, but man, he's been not great whatsoever so far this season. So, you know, maybe as the weather warms up, we'll see, you know, but France with the his ability to make contact, I think there's at least the batting average upside and he's going to hit more than two home runs. You know, uh, there's going to be power occasionally, not going to be a 30 homer kind of slugger, but could he hit 10 home runs the rest of the way? I think that's very realistic to think that he could. Yeah, I think that's probably where I would project him. So we're on the same page on that. I'll give you one. Well, it's, it's really hard to know what's going to happen when touted pitching prospects come up. And I'm at a point now where I want almost any path to the Baltimore Orioles. They are one of the mm. great stories of the year. And for as unbeatable as Tampa Bay looked early in the season, I know they've had a lot of injuries lately, including some major injuries on the pitching side. Baltimore's right there in that loaded AL East. And, and Grayson Rodriguez has had a really odd year because – yeah. If you just told me, okay, he came up and he's got 50 strikeouts in 42 innings, I'm like, oh, he's one of the pickups of the season, right? Well, his ERA is over six. His whip is 1.64. If this were just a, a veteran pitcher, you'd probably cut him and not even think too much about it. But right. I see him in some of my leagues, I see him getting cut. In some of my leagues, I see him getting picked up. I, so the, the market right. is going both ways on Rodriguez right now. He's 55% rostered right. in Yahoo. Throw it over to you. Let's say DJ Short about Grayson Rodriguez. I would probably keep him, but be very selective about where I would use him uh, matchup wise. I think there's a lot of pitchers who fall into that classification right now where you're not super confident on every, any given night that they're going to perform at a high level for you. So I would look out for the matchups. Obviously, he's not going to have to pitch against the AL East as often as previous seasons. That's good. Uh, while he struggled at home this year, I think his ERA is north of seven at home. That is a pitcher-friendly ballpark. I think that'll start to even out for him. The peripherals are there. His most recent start was pretty good. He's given up quite a bit of hard contact so far. So that's something I think is a little bit troubling, but not necessarily predictive. Um, he's still starting to figure some things out. I think he's a keep, but I would use him wisely moving forward. His next start is against Texas. Have we seen <clears throat> enough from this season to label the Rangers as an avoid offense? I think in a matchup like this, I would. I mean, they're the, they're the best offense in baseball on on paper right now, uh, at least as far as what they've done into this point. So I think I would bench them for that matchup. Man, didn't you wish you knew that before the season? Yeah, just get all the Rangers. Thankfully, <laughs> I have a lot of Marcus Simeon, and I you know I, yeah. I end up, I feel like I tweet like you know if I tweet fifteen times in a week, I feel like two or three of the tweets are about Marcus Simeon, who's just one of my <laughs> favorite. I, I just love that guy. And his stats, mm -hmm. he did not hit his first month in Texas. If you look at the last calendar year, and it, it, look, I, I know it's it's picking an arbitrary endpoint, but it makes sense, right? He went to a new team. New yeah. city, you know, new living arrangement, all that stuff. And it took a while to get his feet wet, get comfortable since then. He has been a monster. I think his 
His last 162 is something like a 275 average, 125 runs, 30 homers, 108 RBIs, 30 steals, something in that neighborhood. I'm, I'm really close to the stats, whatever they are. But, I mean, he's been a first-round talent since the beginning of May last year. Adolis Garcia is a monster. They just got Corey Seager back. He's got I mean, Seager back. That's a that's – a, and Josh Young I like too. He's kind of bit up and down, but – uh, yeah, they've got some pieces there. Even Leody T- Tavares, I, I think, is yeah. worth adding, and he's hitting at the bottom of the lineup. Um, I feel like any you know, we talked about Jonah Heim some. I know he didn't have a great yeah, week last right. week, but he's been a top five catcher. Any path right. to Texas sounds good to me right now. 